Hello and welcome to Chrissy Crafts. I'm Chrissy. Come and see what's on my hook, what's in my hoop, and what's happening at home. And some knitting. So I need to work on that. I need some help with my intro now that I'm knitting. I'm not calling myself a knitter yet. I need to actually finish something, which I'll show you in a bit. But it doesn't go with the alliteration of the intro. Hook, hoop, and home and knitting. So if there are any ideas, please send me an email, put in a comment. I need some work on that. So welcome. First off, a big welcome to all my new followers. It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you very much for hitting the subscribe button. And if you've been with me for the past 10 episodes, because this is number 11, welcome back. It's a glorious summer day in England and I'm wearing a woolly scarf, <laughs> shawl. It's because I finished it. Let's get right to it. What's on my hook? Well, this is what's off my hook. Yes, finally. The Mist Kingfisher shawl from the Crochet Project is finished. I am delighted with it. First off, I really love how it sits. It just really just goes really nicely. It is made with Eden Cottage yarns. The Titus four ply in Rambling Rose, that's the pink, and Oakworth four ply in Compost, that's the brown. And it is beautiful. I love the stripes. I love the way it goes. I was really happy when, and I know it's hot outside, but I'm going to wear this for a little while at least cause, because I did it finally. And it's living up to its name. Well, it's called the Miss Kingfisher, but I've been nicknaming, I nicknamed mine the Mist Cupcake because it was cupcake colors. Um, chocolate cake with pink frosting, of course. And when I finished it, I celebrated by making some chocolate cupcakes with pink frosting. Took my little Instagram photo, click. I've got it all ready to show you today with a cupcake. It was on this plate, perfectly little iced cupcake. And it's the missed cupcake because it is gone. Presumably in the tummy of one of my children, but it's no longer with us here. So, life imitating art. Anyway, I'm pleased with that one. I am loving the shawl project books from the Crochet Project. All the details can be found below on how to get your own. They're just really interesting and fun shawls to make. And the shawls are always kind of like scarf size, but I really, which works well for me because I don't want a giant wrappy shawl just yet, especially not with the summer weather. Anyway, so that's off my hook. So now I get to move on to something new. Woohoo! Of course, I have a thousand things I'm trying to finish. I have a shawl that I'm going to be making out of that that I talked about last time. And... I have some more mandalas that I need to keep working on and you know about that already too but I'm throwing something else in there because it's an old whip that I've been working on for a couple years well working on and then left for a while I have it on a blocking board right now this is a circle and squares granny project here are the two other colors that I have these squares I think are just so dreamy. I love the simplicity of circles and squares. I just think it's really beautiful. And I am hoping to make a blanket for my yoga class, just for me. Like I know the family will probably take it over, but it's a really soft, beautiful cotton. And I just wanted something nice for me. And at the end of yoga sessions, usually you have a little relaxation and you cover up and it's really nice to have really soft, cozy, cuddly blanket. And I just love the design of it. And I think when all the squares are joined up, They'll be quite lovely. It's all those colors. I was sent these a couple, golly, is it years now? Maybe a year or two ago um, from a shop in the Netherlands called uh, Scappy. Scappy. Uh, they're the Venice colors. I fell in love with these. It's a beautiful soft cotton and just something about the way they're dyed. It's just really soft and chalky almost and just scrumptious. Could I get them in the UK? No. So I was very kindly sent them from the Netherlands by Michelle at Scopy. And 
since then, I'll put her details below, but also you can now get them, the Venice colors, they're South African, you could get the Venice colors in the UK through various outlets. And I'm bordering these squares with King Cole Bamboo Cotton, another awesome cotton. I love this stuff. This is one of my go-to cottons because it's smooth, it's very soft, it doesn't split as bad as some cottons do. And this is shade 610, my super grayish, my favorite shade of grayish. I just, I can't wait to get this done. I have a ways to go. I have lots of squares. I don't have a set size in mine. Basically, I was just gonna hook with these until I ran out of yarn um, and then hook them up, join them together and have a blanket. So that is something I want to get back to doing because it's high time I finish that. It's been sitting for a long time. The postman just came. Oh, do you want to see what he brought? Oh, you ready for this? Ta -da! Oh, that's a big ball of yarn. Wooly mahusive. And I got <laughs> this looks funny. I look like a little toddler holding a giant ball of yarn. Willie Mahusev. Look at that! Ah -ha! Giant yarn. It's heavy. This is two kilos. Turquoise mammoth. Mammoth yarn. wonder why she called it that. Hmm. This is two kilos of the dove gray mammoth yarn. It's the gorgeous Andrea from Wooly Mahusiv. This is so fun. This is like a prop for a funny movie. Um, she's, I follow her on Instagram. I follow her website. I've met her and she's fabulous. Lots of fun. I love having fun with crochet and knitting. And earlier this week, she had, or no, it was last week, she had made a cushion cover in this dove gray, I think it was. Uh, it is gorgeous. And I, Straight away, suddenly I was like, I have to have some of that. Tell me what color it is. It's beautiful. And she very kindly sent me two of these because I we have a very neutral sitting room because my husband, unfortunately, has an opinion on the decorating. So I can't just put pink and florals everywhere. So everything's kind of neutral, very safe, uh, with grayish and taupe and everything in the sitting room. And I have little cushions with soft greens and soft blues and there's a giant floor cushion my grandma made for me in a Vanessa Arbuthnot fabric that's it's like a um almost like a peacocky blue gorgeous gorgeous so those are our kind of colors within the neutral space so this would be great for a cushion but then she also very kindly sent this along to add a pop of color to our sitting room and I think because we have lots of textures I'm all about the textures if you're going to have lots of neutrals, but I did want a little splash of color. So I think I'm going to do a cushion in the gray and then maybe a little edging for the cushion in this turquoise. Um, oh, it's soft. It's so soft. But what else could you do with this giant yarn? Well, let me tell you, I have my friend Sarah's book. Why did I sing that? Super size crochet. My friend Sarah, who's Anabu's house, I'm sure you've seen this because everyone is getting a copy. Everyone's reviewing it. And and luckily she's a great friend of mine and she has made the coolest book. And just look at that. All those things are made with chunky yarns, super chunky yarns. And I love all of them. So I'm going to choose some things. I mean, there's so many gorgeous things in here. I'm... This would be a wonderful thing to have. Look at that. Enormous floor cushion. That is so cool. My kids would love having that something, that, something like that in the house. Anyway, there's so many fantastic things in here. I know, not even that. Look at that yarn. Look at that bag. That's fab. So this book is fantastic. Sarah has 20 patterns for crochet items that use a ginormous hook. The nice thing is she gives you lots of advice on how to, well, how to actually do ginormous crochet, where to source the things, because it might not be easy for everyone to get giant yarn like that. So how to get some, 
the size hook and how to find giant hooks, even tips on how to work with it because it is different. You know, it's like when I do micro crochet, thread crochet as well, you have to hold your hands differently, hold the hook differently, just it's kind of a different mindset. But how awesome is that? So I will put the details about this book in the notes below and yeah, get a copy. It's great fun. I wonder if that's the yarn I just got. That looks like the Wooly Mahoosub yarn. It looks like the turquoise or it could be the peacock maybe. Mm. Anyway, good fun. Okay, I'm getting warm now. <laughs> Sun's shining. It's really warm. I have something really fun I've been waiting to show you. So, what's in my hoop? So, you probably know one of my dear friends is Jules from So Sweet Violet. She has tons of followers on her YouTube channel. She has tons of followers on her blog and Instagram. She is a crafting goddess. And we've been friends for years and I treasure her. I remember when she first said to me, I'm thinking about starting a blog and that's, we go way back. Anyway, it was her birthday last week and I've made her something. It's a little bit late because, well, I'll tell you in a second, but I'm so excited about it. I'm gonna give it to her before you see this, but I had to save it because I was so excited I wanted to show you. So years ago when she had her first, like when she'd started her blog, she had a little um, logo for So Sweet Violet. And I had taken the logo that had a little bird and some bunting and I'd embroidered it onto a little cushion for her. Uh, and since she's changed her logo, and I was thinking, I always like to make something for her or do something special for her birthday. Like last year, I, we went to Sissinghurst Gardens, had a great time there, and I've made her things. And I was, I had it all set up to give her something. I had an idea. And then I suddenly thought about embroidery and about her new logo. I thought, I haven't done something yet. So it was kind of a last minute change of mind, which is why she hasn't received the present yet, because I was working on it last week and then I worked on it over the weekend. So I'm giving it to her today. It is her logo and some hoop art. So this is her logo. Sorry, I printed it out on the paper and stuck it to my light box. And I traced it onto this linen. I'd originally traced it onto some white linen because I thought with the white, um, but I just wasn't liking it. I started stitching it. I got these green viney bits done and I did a lot of the little pinky orangey flowers and I just wasn't happy with it because it was kind of sliding all over the, it was a wide weave and um, with the white you can see through, it was really sheer white linen and you could see through and the thing with ribbon embroidery, I mean the, the thread embroidery you can do like a waist knot and cut it off and you can do it pretty neatly that you don't see in the back but with ribbon you can't really hide that on the back when you, you have to tighten a bit of a knot at the end you know in the back or else it'll slip out and it was you could kind of see the ribbon showing through and I just wasn't happy with it so at the last minute I decided to put it onto this is Jules favorite linen fabric and I thought well I'll put it on that because I know she'll like that and it worked much much better and I did a mix of well, there are a couple different colors of green there but then I did a mix of thread and silk ribbon embroidery and the fun thing is her it was just serendipity really her logo has the flowers are like a watercolor painting almost and, and they're kind of oranges peaches pinkies different colors there and it just so happened I have a variegated silk ribbon this is just one ribbon. I just kept stitching with it and you could see it's shades of yellowy, peachy, pinky. And so I just kept stitching and made those shades. Oh, it was so fun to do. And then with the purple flowers, the violety flowers, I used two different colors of ribbon. These are the darker purples. And then for some of the bigger ones, I used the lighter purple with a dark purple thread. So I stitched over it. And then this is just the purple ribbon there as well and then finally last night I did the teeny tiny bee at the top I was really pleased with how it turned out and then because she's a Liberty fan I decided to because usually when I make hoop art you can wrap the hoop with ribbon you can paint it I've painted hoops before uh, but I decided I had some Liberty of London washi tape 
think Jules got it for me. I think it, we were a couple of years ago. She had discovered it and and got me some, or I put in a request for some. I think somehow we we got it together. But oh, look, it matches perfectly. Like it makes me think Jules when she was redesigning her logo went like for something these colors because it matches so perfectly it was it was kind of ridiculous i mean look at these pinks and the purples and i think the washi tape first off it's really easy to wrap a embroidery hoop with washi tape because it sticks there's no ribbon glue slippery stuff to mess with it's just and then on the back i just put some felt i'll put in some pictures here of actually how you can back some hoop art for the wall And then a little ribbon. I can't wait to give this to her. La la la. I love making gifts for people. So happy birthday, Jules. So knitting, knitting, because there's no way what's on my needles. I guess I could just do a what's on my needles. Trum. Tentative knitting. So the last time, I had a little mistake last time, and my friend Alex sussed it out. I love knitting and crochet clubs. I have, I host two of them, and it was such a great help to have, look, it's no longer a thong. Yay. It's getting somewhere. Um, so, but I had a little blip with it, so I took it to my, the knitting and crochet club that we go to in Greyshot last week or the week before last whenever and my friend Alex sorted it out and I was on a roll again what I really like is that I like watching I'm getting better at it I'm still not a knitter but I'm getting better at it and so you start off it's like terribly wonky and terribly wonky and here it's starting to go a bit nicer a bit smoother than here but hey look I'm not a knitter and I'll tell you why because I dropped a stitch, which Alex is going to help me with tomorrow at Knitting Club, Knitting and Crochet Club. This is because last Friday I met with Sarah, Sarah of the Super Size Crochet. We met and had lunch, well, kind of had the whole afternoon together, and I brought this along to show her, and she brought some crochet, and so we were chatting and knitting and crocheting, and I'm not at the stage yet where I can really chat for a long time and keep knitting because then that happened and I don't even know when it happened but it did that little drop but as soon as I noticed it I just kind of stopped because I I can try to figure it out but I don't want to <laughs> I just want Alex to help me so uh yeah we're gonna meet at the club tomorrow and sort that out so then it'll keep going oh but god I love this I love those colors yay that by the way is the match and move shawl details are below and I'm hooking it, hooking it, and I'm knitting it with yarn from Hillview Farms, and the details are below. So what's happening at home? Yesterday was the crochet club, my monthly crochet club in my village, and we had a nice group of people show up for some summery crochet. I made, like always, I, I make something different every month, and I like sharing the recipe here just so you know what's good to feed hungry hookers. Given that there's no cupcake on this, I'm going to put on, it is called Melting Moments. It's like a little shortbread biscuit with a lemon buttercream frosting. We had some left over. I took a whole tin. They were very much enjoyed. Oh, here. It's from this book, which actually Jules got me. I don't know, maybe 10 years ago now or something. Biscuits and macaroons. This is a fabulous, fabulous little cookbook. It's full of lots of little cute recipes. Really kind of gift cookies. You know, the kind of thing, they're, they're cookies and biscuits that are meant to impress. Really pretty, not necessarily difficult, but, but interesting ideas and interesting flavors and just really, really beautiful. I've made lots of recipes from there that I give as gifts. And this one in particular is um melting moments and i've written here from july 2014 lovely teacher gifts 
I write in all my cookbooks when I try something just so it's like a little historical document then I know what's good what doesn't if I change something or what I used it for so yes these are lovely little melting moments with a lemon buttercream Did I tell you my tip with buttercream because somebody asked me last night one of the crocheters asked me last night why is it so soft I learned years ago the tip to good buttercream frosting is to mix it forever keep mixing it I put mine on my kitchen aid and I clean up the kitchen and when you when it's done mixing mix it again for a long time like you cannot overbeat buttercream frosting and the more you do it the fluffier it gets so and that's it that's the only tip that that's what makes the difference between just kind of a thick stodgy one and a fluffy cloud-like frosting just keep beating it then you can freeze it and then when you defrost it you in case there's any extra you could defrost it just make sure you beat it again just to get more air into it that's all that's as easy as it is luckily I have my kitchen aid because then I clean up the kitchen my grandma always had really strong arms because she always had to hold the mixer or whisk it or hold the hand hand blender so she always has really strong arms from holding it up I'm lazy so I don't have strong arms but I have good cookies so that's all for me this week Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave me a comment below or send me an email. I would leave my contact details below. If you have any questions or anything, please get in touch. It'd be lovely to hear from you. And if you like this episode, give me a thumbs up if you don't want to leave a comment. Feel free to click subscribe so I can hear from you again. And have a great week and a lovely weekend. Bon appétit! Mmm. Mmm. I love cookies. I love cookies.